Question 3A. All right, we're going to do integration by parts. Integration by parts today. Different from U sub, but you know what? I make it kind of easy on you. On the test, I'll tell you. Do these using U sub. Do these using by parts. Do these however, okay? And tabular. Oh, it reminds me of tab. Tab. <laughs> Okay. Can we just not talk about that? No? Okay. All right, here we go. All right, integration by parts. Here we go. Now, here's the thing. Um, suppose that we're going to let U and V, U and V, be differential, differentiable differentiable functions, okay, that means you can take the derivative of them, and a derivative, functions of x. So they're both, both functions in terms of x, they're just different, u and v, maybe like an f of x and a g of x, something like that. Okay, so let u and v be differentiable functions of x, and then by the product rule, we have the derivative of uv dx is equal to, you remember the product rule, right? a b prime plus b a prime. So according to this, it would be u dv dx. So u times the derivative of v, which is dv dx, plus v times the derivative of u, which would be du dx. So by the product rule, that's what we get, just in different terms. Now let's say that we want to integrate this. What we're going to do is we're going to integrate u times v. That's, that's what we're doing here. So if we integrate both sides with respect to x, this is what we get. We get the integral of d u v dx dx over dx times dx. Okay. So I put the integral in dx to everything equals the integral of u dv dx times dx plus the integral of v du dx times dx. Okay, everyone's okay with that? All right, now let's go ahead and we'll reduce here. So what we get is we get the integral, where is it? There it is. The integral of the derivative of u v dx dx, this is equal to u times v. It's like the integral and the dx, they cancel each other out, what leaving this whole first part. So, so look, it's the derivative of u v and the integral with respect to x, the whole thing cancels each other out. Um, but why did we like just write out that one? Well, we integrated everything, and so now we're cleaning everything up. So we get uv here, and then here, this becomes the integral, the integral of u dv. See how the dx's reduce here and here, and same thing over here. And we get plus the integral of v du. Okay? Now, let's go ahead. We're going to rearrange some stuff, okay? We're just going to take one of these integrals. We're going to take the integral of v du and subtract it to the other side and write everything. So it's the integral of u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. And that's what we're going to use right there. OK? I know it looks weird. I wanted to run you through the process instead of just give you the formula like you like. Um, it says here, the goal of integrating by parts is to go from an integral that we don't see how to evaluate to an integral that we do see how to evaluate, OK? So here's what you need to do. The first thing you need to do when you get these is you're going to choose uh, you. You're going to choose a function that's you, and you're going to choose dv, okay? So something in the integral is going to be u, and another part is going to be dv. So let me show you how to do these, okay? 
I've got like um, one, two, three examples, and then we have to do tabular also. This is part A by parts. All right, number one. Here we go. We're going to integrate x cosine x dx. Now, if you look at this, it looks like the ones that we did with u substitution. But unfortunately, you can't do u substitution here. Because if you choose x to be u, it's not going to work. Okay? Uh, if you choose cosine x as u, nothing's going to reduce. It's just not going to work. So we have to do these, the, this integral by parts. Okay? So here we go. You're going to choose a u and a dv. Let me show you what that is. So we're going to, you, most of the time they'll tell you, let u equal, and in this case, they're going to say let u equal x. So if u is x, the rest of it is going to be dv, okay? So that means that dv is going to equal cosine x dx. Can they tell us that or should we just know? You'll know, yeah. So if you let u equal x, the rest of it is dv. Because let me show you what we're doing. Now let's rewrite this. Let's rewrite this. This is the integral of... If x is u and cosine x is dv, we're actually finding the integral of u dv. Well, what is the integral of u dv? We just wrote it down. Yep, it's this formula right here. So then we take the antiderivative of dv? Yeah, we're going to. Okay, so now let's do the whole thing. So here we go. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v. Well, we need to find out what V is. So V comes from this right here. This is the derivative of V. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an integral to both sides, right? So if I integrate both sides, then I'll find out what it is. So I wanna find out what V is. If the integral or you know the derivative of V is cosine, then what would be the other way? Sine X, mm-hmm, sine of X. So dv is cosine x dx. That means that v is sine x. You don't believe me? Maybe you do. But if you don't, then take the derivative. Do dv dx equals cosine x. And then move the dx to the other side. They're the same thing. Okay? All right. So the integral of u dv is going to be u times v. So that's going to be x times sine x minus the integral of v du. So v is sine x, yeah. mm -hmm. and then du comes from the u right here. du dx equals 1. So what does du equal? du equals dx. I shouldn't have written that equal sign, but that's okay. So this is going to be the integral of sine x dx. Do you see all that? It's a lot. I know parts is really difficult, especially the first one you do. So let me just let me just write down what we just did. So we did the u times v. So this is u, and that's times v, minus the integral of v du. And you're just really just substituting a whole bunch of stuff in. V was sine x, that went in there. Du is dx, that went there. Okay, now we're ready. Here we go. So this is now equal to x sine x, and then find the integral, so minus the integral of sine x dx, which is negative cosine. Mm -hmm. So that would change that to plus cosine x. And then finally, plus C. And once all your integrals are gone, that would be the answer. Woo! Tough, huh? Poor kids that aren't here today. No? Not too bad? Okay. Everyone except Molly can probably do it. Yeah. Yes, right? All right, so here we go. Number two. Number two. We're going to integrate the natural log of x dx. Have you noticed that we haven't taken the integral of natural log of x yet? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. You have to do it by parts. 
Yeah, we've taken the derivative of natural log of x, but never the integral. OK, so here's what you want to do. You always want to choose u and dv first. Remember, this is the integral of u dv. So let's choose u equals the natural log of x. This one's really small, so there's only really two parts. u equals the natural log of x, and then dv equals dx. Now, sometimes what people like to do is they like to choose that first, and then they just like to do this. Watch. So if u equals the natural log of x, then du would equal 1 over x dx, and v would equal what? x. Gross, huh? Like, what do you think the derivative of x? The derivative of x is 1. So you got to go like that way. Oh. Yeah. So it's like 1 and then, yeah. Okay, so then you leave those there. Those are These are all the parts that we need for our integration by parts. Okay, so here you go. Why do you want to do this next over x? Oh, because when you take the derivative of u, it's du dx, and I just moved the dx over already. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's set it up. So the integral of u dv equals u times v. So then you look. See, I have these four things written down. I really like it that way. Like you choose a u, you choose a dv, then you find du, and you find v. And then you have all your parts that you do. So you're going to do u times um, v. Is that the natural log squared x? Uh, which part? For this part? Yeah, or is that? Oh, no, no. Yeah, it's x okay. times ln x. Good question. Yeah. So it's not the x's that are getting multiplied. It's x times natural log of x, which that's why I like to put it out front so okay. that, yeah. Minus the integral of v du. Oh. Okay. Minus the integral of v du. So x and du is 1 over x dx. Mm -hmm. So then the x's will reduce here, and what we do is we get x natural log of x minus the integral of just 1 dx, or you could just write dx, and we just did that, didn't we? We found that the integral of 1 is x, so minus x, and then don't forget plus c. Pretty good. There it is. So that's by parts. Take, if you took the derivative of this right here, it would equal natural log of x. You would do product rule, and then you'd have this minus 1 at the end. Yeah, it, it equals it. We could try it if you want to, but I'm sure you're good. OK, number three. Let's try another one. And then I'm going to show you tabular. Tabular is fun. It really is. It's good, clean fun. All right, so this is the integral of x e to the negative x dx. A lot of times I will tell you what u is, and then just the rest of it will be dv, OK? So here we go. Uh, let u equal x. So use just this first part, x. And then that means that dv would be the rest of it. The dx has to go with the dv. So dx is e to the negative x dx. And let's just go ahead, before we start plugging everything in, let's find the derivative and the antiderivative, OK? So the derivative du would equal 1 dx, OK? And then here, we're going to take the antiderivative, because it's the derivative of v equals that. So then the, so v would equal, do you know what that is? It's the antiderivative e to the negative x. So it would be e to the negative x times 1. Times negative. negative yeah. Mm -hmm. Times negative 1. Yeah. So you put a negative out front. OK. We're ready. Because um, of chain rule. So the derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x and then times negative 1. So you need that negative 1 there. All right, so here we go. The integral of 
Yes. UDV. Uh, that's the whole thing. So I'm just going to write UDV. Equals U times V. So I'll write negative X E to the negative X minus the integral of V DU. So I'm going to change that to a plus. And then DU is DX. That. And then you integrate the same thing again. So this is equal to negative x e to the negative x. And then we just did this. The integral of e to the negative x is minus e to the negative x plus c. Yay. It's been a while since I've done these. I feel a little rusty. Like I keep looking at my notes today like, just to make sure. Okay, let's do the second part. Second part's fun. It's tabular. It's, it's tubular. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's good. It's actually a shortcut to parts. It is. Okay, so here it is. We have the integral of f of x times g of x times dx, right? That's what we've been doing. We wrote it as the integral of u dv, but this is really what it is. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to take, um, you take f of x, and what you do is you find, you make a column, and you find the derivative of f of x until it gets down to 0, okay? And then you take g of x with dx, and since it has a dx on it, you're going to find its integral integral um, until, not until it gets to zero, because it won't, but you do it until, like, until these run out. You do it until those end. Yeah, I know. <coughs> I'll show you. Okay, when this equals zero, you're going to do them at, like, the same, they all have to match up to each other. We'll do one. Here we go. Um, number four. Number four. So you know that last one that we just did, the integral of x squared e to the x dx? We're going to do it tabular. I'm going to show you get the same answer. No? So this is x squared. Oh, but it was different. The other one wasn't x squared, was it? No. OK. dx. All right, so this one's a little bit different. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take one of them that will go to 0. Okay, e to the x, if you take the derivative, it's never going to get to 0. So one of them needs to get to 0. So we're going to take x squared, and we're going to make that f of x. What if they both can go to 0? Um, if they both can't, well, no, because you're integrating one of them, and you're taking the derivative of the other. So one of them won't. One of them won't, yeah. So you have x squared here, and over here you have e to the x, and you can write dx over here. Okay? So here we go. We're going to take the derivative here until we get to 0. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, the derivative of 2x is 2, and then the derivative of 2 is 0. All right. Over on this side, we are then going to take the integral each time. So it's the same thing as the derivative. It's e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. Uh-huh. For e to the x, it is. Only for e to the x. Okay? So then this is what we do. We take these, and then we're going to match them up, okay? So the x squared, what you do is you match it up to the one below. And then the 2x gets matched up to the e to the x. And the 2 gets matched up to the e to the x. And then 0, you don't need to match that up. And here's what you write. Here's the answer. You're going to love this. It's x squared times e to the x plus. 2x times e to the x plus 2 times e to the x plus c. That's weird. Isn't that cool, though? I, like I know. It's called tabular. What was the point of the first part? Well, because you can't do them all by tabular. Sometimes you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will tell you, you know, even when you get to the test, there's different ways to integrate. The hardest part about this part of calculus is figuring out which way to use, but I make it easy. I tell you, do these by substitution, do these by parts, do these by tabular, 
and then the ones that are coming up, you'll have ways to do those too. All right. We've got one more. What's that? Final, yes. Yes. All right. Number five. Here we go, last one. Uh, we're going to integrate x cubed sine x dx um, by tabulars. Okay? Integrate using tabular. Sine x can't. Yeah. So we're going to let um, f of x equal x cubed, and we're going to let sine of x dx be the g of x part. Okay, so we're going to integrate here, and our derivatives here integrates there. All right, so here we go. Derivative of 3 of x cubed is 3x squared. Derivative of 3x squared is 6x. Derivative of 6x is 6. Derivative of 6 is 0. Now be careful over here. You're going backwards. It's weird, right? So what's the derivative of sine, or the integral of sine x? Negative cosine. What's the derivative of negative? We're doing integrals. Yes. Nope. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you need a negative, negative. Yeah. Negative, negative. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you need a negative, negative. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Yes. Yes. Antiderivatives. Yeah. So then what would give me, what kind of sign? Negative sine. The derivative of sine is cosine, so I need a negative. Now, what gives me the, if I take the derivative of something, it gives me negative sine? Cosine. And this one would be sine. Oh, crap, I did it wrong. I, I thought that was wrong. Okay. On the last part, I did one little thing wrong. I'm so sorry. No, no, tiny, tiny. It alternates, plus, minus, plus. So this right... Don't, don't write it. I'm sorry. If Kevin was here, he'd be so mad at me. Kevin, don't be mad. So plus, minus, plus. Okay? It alternates. So this one's going to alternate too. I just saw it on my paper. And remember I said, oh, I need to check my notes. And I didn't. Okay, yeah. So no, it doesn't matter. Plus C, minus C, that doesn't matter. If you, it's just a constant. So you just need, yeah. It alternates between the other three? It alternates between these, yeah. If you wrote minus C, that wouldn't be wrong. That would be fine. Yeah. Okay, so let's do it. I'm sorry. Deepest apologies. All right, so we're going this way. To there, to there, to there. All right, so the first one's going to be plus. Second one's going to be minus. And then plus. Yes, so we're going to get some different answers here. All right, so here we go. So the integral is. We've got x cubed times positive negative cosine x. So that's going to be negative x cubed cosine x. The next one's going to be a negative times a negative. So that's going to give me positive 3x squared sine x. And then the next one is 6x times positive cosine x. 6x cosine x. And then the last one is negative 6 sine x and then plus C. Wowzers. How would you like to do that one by parts? That would have been horrible. You, had, you would have had to have done parts like three times. It's really bad. <laughs>